Hello and welcome to this stunningly beautiful and haunting Crystal Palace. So I've decided to come down and visit somewhere again that's been on my bucket list for a long, long time. And again, I was fanatical about this place probably 20 years ago and I've decided this is the year I need to come out and see these things. But I've picked the worst day I could have done. It's 32 degrees today, but it looks gorgeous in this sun. Across the next three videos, we're going to be exploring the different elements that made up the large site of Crystal Palace Park. From the main Crystal Palace building itself, to the fountains, attractions and many different forms of unique transport found within the park. So let's begin today's video with a brief story on how the Crystal Palace came to be. Then we will begin our explore of the site, looking for all that remains to this day. Originally built in Hyde Park in London to house the Great Exhibition of 1851, it was designed by Joseph Paxton and it was one of the largest buildings in the world at the time. The building was made from iron support columns and covered completely in sheets of glass and then it earned its name as the Crystal Palace. After the successful exhibition came to a close some six months later, a consortium of businessmen that included two board members of the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway came up with a plan to relocate the palace to Penge Place at the top of Sydenham Hill in South London. The area was renamed Crystal Palace after the landmark and the surrounding park also took the same name. The new palace was rebuilt at the new location, but this time it would be modified and made much larger than the original. It had its central transept greatly enlarged and two further transepts were added to either end of the main gallery. It was opened on the 10th of June 1854 by Queen Victoria. The park and surrounding area had further infrastructure installed to house the palace, from large terraces and grand stairways to elaborate fountains and attractions within the park itself. It would also have two railway stations built to accommodate the permanent exhibition. Crystal Palace High Level Station, located just behind the palace itself, and the Crystal Palace Low Level Station, located at the western edge of the park. It was also serviced by the existing Penge West Railway Station to the south of the site. The park and the palace hosted numerous events and exhibitions throughout its 82 year life. From showcases of new technology like the pneumatic passenger railway in 1864 to the festival of the empire in 1911. The palace suffered a small fire in 1866 when the north transept burned down. It was never repaired and replaced with an outdoor garden. Sadly, by the 1930s, the palace had started to fall into disrepair and visitor numbers had started to decline. Then one fateful November night in 1936, the palace suffered a major fire fueled by strong winds. This destroyed the entire building and the glow could be seen across eight counties. It is said that over 100,000 people came to watch the blaze, among them Winston Churchill. The palace site was swiftly cleared and all that remained were two large water towers built by Isambard Kingdom Brunel. The south tower was demolished soon after the fire due to structural concerns and the north tower was demolished in 1941 due to its prominence as a landmark during World War II. The site today has many remains still intact. Its use as a public park still continues to this day. But the palace itself, despite numerous attempts in modern times to rebuild, has long gone. Over the next few videos, I will be showing you all that remains today and uncovering many of the hidden clues to what once stood across the entire Crystal Palace Park. So I'm just making my way into these trees from the terrace because I spotted something off the pathway. It's what remains of some old stairs hidden in the trees. A massive stone staircase with what looks like would have been 
uh, statues here as well. There's plinths, or there's like a there's bolt marks on the corners of this plinth here. So yeah, definitely some grand staircase here. Now, the Crystal Palace ran all the way along the back there, right over to the other side of the park. Like I said, it was huge, but it also came out at the sides and ran down here as well in small buildings that ran all the way down, probably a few hundred yards that way on both sides. And just in the trees at the back of this staircase, just on my right here, is the original back wall for the building that I was talking about that came out from the palace and ran down the side. This is the original back wall here, you can just see it. There's also one on the other side, like I said, of the palace and you can see the original back wall of that one as well, right near the Crystal Palace station down there. And then right here, you can see like a cellar of the old building. Let's get down and have a look. Yeah, so here is what looks like a cellar underneath the original building here. So at this level, you would have been in the, the building branching off down the side here. And this would have been the lower basement level. You can see some large like bunkers underneath here. Yeah, I love things like that when you come off the beaten track. That's why normally if something's fenced off, I'll have a look at least. And there you can see them again, the old cellars. So I've ventured up now to what would have been the eastern section of Crystal Palace. And inside there would have been the aquarium. And also right next to it would have been one of the famous Brunel water towers that you can see in here. It would be the North Tower that was here. So we're going to go have a look at that site now and see what remains of all of that. Now, just to bear in mind, that side of Crystal Palace actually burned down well before they had the big fire that finished it off. So just as I'm heading up in the trees here, you've got these concrete um, like round plinths. Now, I'm pretty sure I've seen them in the construction of Crystal Palace. I think they were the original uh, foundations for the steel or the iron girders holding the palace up. I've definitely seen them before. I'm pretty sure that's what they are. Probably not in the original place. The palace would have been here, but they could have been moved later on. There's lots of rubble here as well. Because obviously they just destroyed the whole palace. Now this section here is now the Arkiva mast or TV mast you can see there. So this bit's private now, but that was part of the palace. It came as far as this, in fact, a bit further over towards there. And it would have towered above us here. And this would have been one of the basement levels, but they've all built on that now. And also the aquarium was here and you can actually see the remains of that aquarium. Yeah, you can see the aquarium tanks there. Now, I believe that they are currently working on trying to restore or at least repair this section of the aquarium here. As it says over there, the Crystal Palace Foundation. I think they are working, they're looking for funding to try and restore that back to its former glory. Yeah, you can see it much better up here. You can see where the uh, building would have been at the back there. You can see down there as well, another tank. Now I wonder where that door leads at the back end. <laughs> I'd love to go in there. I bet it carries on. All right, so just as we're heading up the road here to the edge of the palace, you just see this rounded concrete base sticking out here with bricks inside. Now I know exactly what that was. That would have been the Brunel North Tower foundations. So right here, you would have had these massive towering structures right up there, one on either side of the palace, holding thousands and thousands and thousands of gallons of water, probably millions, all to feed the fountains across the park all the way down into the valley. So they needed that pressure from here of the water pushing down to make the fountains two, 300 feet tall further down. And it worked. But there's the base of it anyway. I never thought we'd see that actually. So yeah, Isambard Kingdom Brunel, 
designed and built those. And uh, at least there's something left of it. It's not completely gone. I know the other side, there's a bit more left. Now, just at the top of here is a large reservoir now. Used to be one of the storage reservoirs for the top. Used to feed the towers, the water in the towers here. Yeah, I've just come around the other side and you can see the reservoir. It's definitely filled in. And uh, over there where that white building is, would have been one of the old pump houses as well, or engine house as it was called on the map, pumping the water probably into the water towers over here and then down to the fountains. Now we're going to head to the west side of the palace and take a look at the Brunel Water Tower, the South Tower, and also the Crystal Palace Museum. So here you can see the concrete base again. Now I keep saying concrete base, but it's actually rendered, so it's bricks inside there with a rendering around the outside. Now we're just approaching the base of the tower here from the other side, and you can just see a little passageway into the tower. So this would have been used to access the tower up a winding staircase. And you can clearly see the remains of that inside there. Now, like I said earlier, this tower was demolished straight after the fire. So this was the first one to go. And I think it was due to structural damage from the fire. But you can clearly see here the big pipes coming from the tower. And there would have been a lever just at the top there to uh, open a valve. But this would have fed the water right down into the park to supply the fountains. And here you can see the back side of the Crystal Palace Museum that's still open today. This is an original building that was here before. I also found this just behind the museum. It looks like a Weybridge and it did have a date of 1920 on it. So that would have been there when the palace was open. So we're now gonna head back to the west side of the palace and look at some stairs that headed down to the upper terrace and also take a look at some abandoned stairs and the staircase to the west transept. So here you can see the stairs are intact leading down to the upper terrace. In fact these sphinxes on the outside have actually been recently repainted and refurbished. Now here you can see the abandoned staircase which is hidden in the trees. This would have led down to the lower terrace. And then these stairs here would have headed straight into the west transept of the palace. So the palace would have been right at the top of those stairs. We found this at the side of the pathway. It looked like a big mound of rubble hidden in the trees. This would have been roughly where the palace came down to. So this is probably the remains of the floor from in the palace. And again here, we found a mound, which is exactly where the palace would have stood. So I believe that they've piled all the rubbish underneath there from the palace. We're now going to take a look at the staircase up to the centre of the palace. As you can see here, this is the concrete foundations for the main stairs that led into the palace. Now these were different to the other stairs. These were actually quite a lot higher and they were on a raised platform. So this is probably the remains of the supports for the stairs leading up. But you can clearly see they are very old and original. We're now going to head up onto the actual palace site. So I'm going to start on the west side. So the palace would have headed right across to the far side where those trees are there. And then all the way to the right. I'm now going to show you a reconstruction of one of the columns for the palace. This is here as a memorial today. But you can just see the sheer size of just one of those supporting columns that made up the palace. And 
And just to the side of the sculpture, I saw these concrete foundations here with what looks like some large bolts sticking out. Now these to me look like some kind of a cable stay. And then just in the undergrowth here, we found some brickwork, which looked like a vaulted ceiling. Now this section here is what I would call an out of bounds mound. It's completely fenced off. You can't access it, but it is very high up and raised compared to the rest of the foundations for the palace. So I reckon again, a lot of the palace remains were dumped inside there. Now I would love to have gone in there and had a look, but like I said, it was completely fenced off. On the east side of the palace is another one of those staircases that remain. This again has been recently restored and repainted, but that would have led directly into the east transept for the palace, which actually burnt down early in its life. Now we're going to take a look at the terraces that made up the front of the palace. So you've got the upper terrace and the lower terrace. Now on this central section here, or the lower terrace as it's known, right across to there, there was elaborate fountains all the way along as well. There were small fountain basins with large fountains inside them all along the front of here. Again, all gone today. Now, I do believe there might be the, the remains of one of the fountain basins over there, but I'll check that out later on. But on this side, there is nothing remaining that I can see anyway. Just look how amazing these old terraces are here. It's a shame to see them in such a state like today. They could easily be restored and opened up to the public. It's now all fenced off. Apart from this section here where I can get really close to it. But you can see the quality and the stonework in there. And it wouldn't take much to restore these. I'm sure they could get a grant from somewhere to fix these up. And then the terrace around the front hand side here. And then just out of nowhere, we've got a headless statue. Now there's plenty of these all over the park. There used to be hundreds and hundreds of statues in this park. A lot of them have been vandalized and a lot of them are still in storage as well. They did rescue some of them. But this one's got no head as you can see. Join me in the next video where we'll be exploring the remains of Crystal Palace Park. Again, I will be showing you all the hidden features from fountain basins to the giant hedge maze and the dinosaur park. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.